Um, so are you ready for a demonstration? So my demonstration tonight is for a, an adjustable buckle strap. So I had a request for this on Tuesday and I was pretty into the idea. So I prepared it uh, for you tonight. I actually went ahead and clipped this adjustable strap to my Kennedy bag, which is a free video in pattern. Um, but I just wanted to show it to you on a bag before I got into the demonstration. So the reason that this particular strap is adjustable, let me show you the actual buckle portion of the bag. So this bag has a buckle on it. It clips to the bag with swivel clips, which means all you need to do is add little tabs to basically any bag with either a D ring or a triangle ring. I have a triangle ring here. But the buckle portion is what makes it adjustable. So um, I'll show you the adjustable portion in the side camera, but I just wanted to show you um, kind of how it attaches and looks like on an actual bag. But I'm gonna jump over to the side camera. I'll show you the strap uh, before I get over to the demonstration. Okay, so here there's swivel clips on either end. Here's the buckle portion. And what makes it adjustable is that this is basically like a working, um, I don't know, I guess belt buckle if you wanna look at it that way. So in order to shorten the strap, you just go ahead and pull it through holes that are further down the strap. So if you want a longer strap again, all you have to do is adjust it back down and it's got a little loop over here to hold uh, the end of the strap. So you can make this in either cork, leather, vinyl, or I also have instructions for making it with quilting cotton. So whatever material you'd like to use, you can use this demonstration. So Danny's gonna put a graphic on the screen right now. This graphic contains all of the supplies that you'll need for making the adjustable buckle strap. So you'll need for sure, no matter what material you're using, two one inch swivel clips, and you'll also need a one inch buckle with a tongue. Um, the tongue is just that little piece in the middle that goes through the hole in the fabric. So here's the supply list. If you're making uh, with quilting cotton, you'll need your actual fabric and shape flex. And if you're using cork, leather, or vinyl, you'll follow the supply list near the end of the graphic. So I went ahead and posted this on my blog for you to reference later. Um, you, basically, you'll need to cut two of each piece out. And then if you're using quilting cotton, you'll also need shape flex. So of course, you'll be attaching shape flex um, to your quilting cotton pieces before you get started. And I also have a link in the description for a template for um, the buckle. So if you noticed on my um, sample right here, the end of the buckle has a curved portion. You'll just go ahead and cut this template out and I'll show you in a minute how to align this on your fabric. So the dashed line is for cork, vinyl, or leather and the solid line on the outside is for quilting cotton. And of course, you'll need to measure your one inch or four centimeters square just to make sure it printed out correctly. Okay, so let's get started with um, the quilting cotton. So I went ahead and took two of my strap extender pieces of course, they already have the um, Pellon Shape Flex fused to them. And I went ahead and placed the two pieces right sides together and I sewed both of the long edges using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my fast turn turning tool. So this tool comes in two pieces. It comes as a half inch tube and it also has a metal portion with a corkscrew. So the corkscrew portion is the piece that will grab onto your fabric and pull it through the tube. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the tube through both layers of fabric. And then I'm gonna go ahead and insert that corkscrew and then near the end of the fabric, anywhere really, I'm gonna go ahead and twist that corkscrew so that it can grab onto the fabric. All right, come on there. Okay, so there you can see the corkscrew is on this end and I'm just gonna use it. Oh, it came loose. Of course, everything when you're live. All right, let's give this another shot. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it through the tube, right side out. And then just to release the corkscrew, you just go ahead and twist it back the, in the other direction. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a press so that the seams are on either side. I'm just gonna use my fingers to roll out the seams and I'm also gonna press the raw edges toward the inside by about a quarter of an inch. No need to measure that. You can just go ahead and flip the ends in toward the inside by a quarter of an inch. And I believe I have another 
piece prepared here. So this is what it should look like after it's pressed. And I'm just using my Wonder Clip to hold that opening toward the inside by a quarter of an inch. So I went ahead and top stitched both of the long edges only using an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to give it a nice looking finish. And then what you'll do next is prepare the tab pieces. So the tab pieces is this portion over here that holds the strap after it comes through the buckle. So this is just a really small piece. For the quilting cotton, you're just gonna take both of your tab fabrics and sew them right sides together along just one of the long edges. Since this is such a skinny little piece, we're just gonna sew it right sides together along one long edge and then we're gonna press um, on the other long edge just to get a finish. So I've got my piece here, I, I pressed it before the show. So I went ahead and I first pressed that seam open and then I went ahead and pressed both of the long edges in toward the center by a quarter of an inch. So basically you're pressing it in toward the edge of the pressed open seam. So this is what it will look like after you've pressed it. And then if you just go ahead and refold it, then both of the long edges are enclosed. Okay, so what I did with this piece, again, I top stitched both of the long edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance to finish this piece as well. Okay, so next we're gonna be putting everything together. So I sort of pinned this before the show just um, to speed the process along a bit. Let me show you first what we're gonna be doing with um, this tab piece. Let me take this out. Okay, so the tab piece, I'm gonna to flip to the wrong side of the strap extender. You're gonna be measuring an inch and a half down from one of the short ends right here. So an inch and a half down, uh, pardon me, uh, two inches down from the short edge. Um, as you can see, my backside looks a little bit messy, but um, you'll just be stitching one end down first, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Um, obviously, it'll be easy to stitch the first end down because you can keep this edge uh, pushed away from your strap extender. When I stitched the second edge down, I, I just went ahead and made sure both of the raw edges kind of met in the middle right over here. And then I held it with my finger just so that I could get my presser foot down, pushing this out of the way and stitch this piece down. It doesn't have to look pretty, you just need to stitch it down. Okay, so there's three different methods uh, to finish uh, the whole openings for the buckle. So if you're using cork leather or vinyl, you can just go ahead and make a, a hole that's centered an inch and a half down. And if you prefer, you can leave the hole raw, which is what I did with my cork sample. As you can see, it's just a hole through the fabric. If you have a rivet press with grommets, you can use a three millimeter grommet like I did here. Or if you have multiple stitches on your machine, you can use a buttonhole stitch to make the hole instead. So you have three options depending on the type of fabric that you're using. You want that hole over there so that the tongue of the buckle um, can go through it. Okay, so let's see if I could get this correct. The tongue is gonna go through, I believe I have that backwards, but it should look like this. The tongue should be on top. I spent way longer than necessary uh, trying to get the placement correct before the show. So we're, we're just gonna go with this for now. So after you have the, the tongue through the hole and the placement correct, you're just gonna go ahead and secure this folded over edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So that will secure this end. The other end is just going to go on to one of your swivel clips. So again, you're gonna stitch this down using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so this piece is all done. You can put this piece to the side. The next step is working on the piece with the template. So that template that I showed you earlier, for quilting cotton, again, you're gonna cut that out along the solid dash line. So I've got my piece cut out right here. Okay, so go ahead and take two of your strap pieces. You're gonna place them right sides together before sewing, however, you're gonna use the template to just draw around the bottom edge of the fabric just to round that edge out. And then you're gonna sew the entire strap, leaving the short end unsewn, unsewn using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. However, I found it really helpful to cut along the dash line for this portion because you can go ahead and take that smaller piece before you start sewing. And you can take your chalk or your friction pen and draw just that 
curved portion on the end because I actually use that as a stitching line. It's really awkward, especially because this piece is so narrow to get a pretty stitch. But if you mark it before you start stitching, at least you'll have that line to stitch directly on top of. Okay, so you're just gonna go ahead and notch the curved edges, which means cut little Vs within the seam allowance. And then we're gonna turn this right sides out and then press it kind of like we did with the strap extender. So I'm going to go ahead and take my fast turn tool one more time. Let's get in between those two layers. The only difference um, between the strap extender and the strap as far as turning it right side out is the strap has this finished end over here, which gives the fast turn tool a little bit extra to hold on to. All right, so let's see if I can get this to go on the first try live. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we're just gonna pull that whole, oh, that figures. All right, I'll give it one more shot and then we'll move on. Okay, so there's my little corkscrew and then I'm just gonna gently pull it through the tube. All right. So as you can see, it was pretty easy using this tool to turn it right side facing out. Okay, so again, you're gonna press by using your iron first, roll, use your fingers to roll the seams out to either side. After you've pressed it, you're going to top stitch using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I've got my strap piece over here. Went ahead and top stitched it using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So here is my portion. Um, I decided to use grommets. Again, if you're using cork or leather, you can just leave your holes raw. Um, you can use a buttonhole, and I used grommets here. So my measurements for marking the holes for the grommets, or if you're making holes or buttonholes, I first measured three inches away from the short end, made a marking to install the grommet, and then every two inches. Um, I would just uh, at least place five holes in here just so you have a little bit of leeway for adjusting your strap. On the other end, I went ahead and just as I did before, I pushed the raw edges toward the inside by a quarter of an inch. I slid that second swivel clip on this end of the strap. And then again, I top stitched using an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch just to finish this end. Okay, so once this is finished, it goes through uh, your buckle. Let me just talk for a minute about if you're using cork, leather, or vinyl. So the only difference um, in the assembly methods uh, between qu quilting cotton and the cork, which I have here, is instead of sewing the fabrics right sides together, you're instead just going to, um, you can either use a glue stick or wonder clips. You're gonna hold the, the layers wrong sides together and just top stitch. So you're gonna skip that whole step uh, where, I, where in the quilting cotton I sewed it right sides together. But the rest of the methods are um, exactly the same. Let me go ahead and pull this out just so you can see how it looks and how to insert it. So here's my piece with the buckle and the swivel clip on this end. And I'm just gonna go ahead and it's super easy. Thread it through this end, decide which hole you'd like to place it in, and then slide it through the tab. So quick and easy. Of course, the other end has the swivel clip, so you have a swivel clip to attach to either end of your bag. And I just feel like this is a really nice finish and something a little bit different than the traditional um, adjustable strap with your metal slider. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. Again, the graphic uh, for the supplies that you'll need and the cutting list are um, in the description in case you'd like to reference it uh, at a future date. So I'd like to invite you now, if you enjoy our live shows, if you enjoy my sewing demonstrations and bag making videos, we'd like to invite you now, if you're watching on Facebook, to go ahead and hit the share button right now. Share this sewing video with your other sewing friends on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, I hope you will hit the uh, subscribe now button and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified of our future bag making videos. And regardless, um, you can like our video either on Facebook or YouTube and the like looks uh, like a little thumbs up icon. So I wanna share a photograph 